Japanese Immigrant Nationalism, The Issei and the Sino-Japanese War, 1937-1941, by Yuji Ichioka, published in California History, Fall 1990, Part 3. There were many cultural expressions of Issei nationalism. The Issei regularly expressed their patriotic sentiments through poetry. Every Japanese immigrant daily newspaper published patriotic poems. The Rafu Shimpo of Los Angeles, for example, sponsored annual poetry contests on war-related themes and published the results in its special New Year's edition. In January 1938, the theme was the so-called China Incident. In January 1939, it was War Victory to commemorate the fall of Canton and Hankou, Guangzhou and Hankou. And in January 1940, it was the coming New Order in Asia. Simple verses described Nisei patriotic activities. Senin Bari, sown to deflect Chinese bullets. Over time, home front contributions increase even more. And Imon Hin, my younger sister includes talismans. Other poems express Japanese patriotism from an immigrant perspective. War victory, celebration in an alien land swelling with pride. War victory, hands outstretched towards the motherland. And the flag of the rising sun, bowing in silence, an old immigrant. And still others express keen interest in the progress of the Sino-Japanese War. The China incident, ears upturned, the radio news. And war victory, radio news, until daybreak. The official Japanese government patriotic march song, Aikoku Ko Shin Kyoku, became an overnight hit within Japanese immigrant society in early 1938. Soon after, another march, composed and written by no Nozaki Kiyoshi of Ario Grande, became the unofficial patriotic march of the Issei in Southern California. The second tune was an American version of the Japanese government's patriotic march in Japan. The Issei sang both at patriotic gatherings. Many Issei endeavored to instill Japanese patriotism in their children through cultural institutions. In the late 30s, branches of the Martial Virtue Society, Buto Kukai, proliferated within Japanese immigrant society. Under the leadership of Nakamura Tokichi, a rabid nationalist, the aim of the society was to inculcate the Japanese spirit in Nisei youngsters through the teaching of Japanese swordsmanship. The society even established a special institute in Tokyo in 1938 to accommodate Nisei students. Called the North American Institute of the Imperial Way, Hokube Kodo Gakuin, the school listed Toyama Mitsuru, a notorious right-wing nationalist, as an advisor. Japanese language school teachers promoted Japanese patriotism among Nisei youngsters by teaching them to compose essays in Japanese with themes relating to the Sino-Japanese War. Many teachers also taught their pupils to write letters of appreciation to Japanese soldiers and forwarded them to the China front. A typical letter read, Two Japanese soldiers in China. The year is fast coming to an end. It's probably cold over there. It's hard for us who live in sunny Southern California to imagine your hardships. Every day we learn of your heroic deeds from the newspaper and radio. I believe that people throughout the world will soon acknowledge your efforts in fighting for justice with the Japanese spirit and Bushido. I hope that day will come quickly. According to the latest news, we learn that the Imperial Army is launching its final attack on Nanking. We get excited every time we see the morning newspaper. You will reach your goal soon. The final victory is the most important. I pray that you will be victorious as soon as possible and that you will work toward restoring peace in the Orient. As we are about to usher in the new year in this time of crisis, I would like to express our gratitude for your accomplishments thus far and to extend our encouragement for the future. I await the day when you will return home as victorious heroes. Nakamura Toshiko Various institutions and individuals helped, Issei, helped to shape Issei opinion regarding the Sino-Japanese War. The Japanese immigrant press was by far the most influential. All daily newspapers relied heavily on Domei news agency dispatches from Japan for day-to-day -day coverage of the war. The agency was established in 1936 with a monopoly over the release of news abroad. 
ostensibly an independent agency, it was in fact under the control of the Japanese government, so that its coverage of the Sino-Japanese War was always biased in favor of the Japanese side. For the average Issei, the Daily Domei dispatches reprinted in the immigrant press were the main source of information about the war. In addition, each newspaper had its own correspondent in Tokyo who reported on the war in supplemental articles aimed at Issei readers. In every case, these correspondents were men who had worked for the immigrant press at one time and were thus familiar to the Issei. For example, the Rafu Shimpo of Los Angeles had Muto Shogo, the Nichibei Shimbun, of San Francisco had Sagitani Seichi, and the Kashu Mainichi of Los Angeles had Komatsu Yoshimoto. Three newspapers had their own war correspondents who also molded opinion. The Shin Seikai Asahi, published in San Francisco, had three men at different times. The most prolific was Murayama Tamotsu, who was a Dome reporter at the outset of the Sino-Japanese War. In the fall of 1937, he went to the China Front, from which he filed dispatches to the Shin Seikai Asahi. Murayama unfailingly cited the heroism of Japanese soldiers in reporting on the fighting. He also conveyed the gratitude the soldiers expressed at receiving Inmon Bukuro from overseas Japanese, striking undoubtedly responsive chords in the hearts of the Issei who sent them. After his China assignment, Murayama embarked on an extensive speaking tour of Japanese communities on the Pacific coast. In late 1937 and early 1938, he gave personal, first-hand accounts of the war before Issei and Nisei audiences. Murayama was no stranger to the Issei. He was a Kibe Nisei. Born in Seattle in 1905, he had received his early education in Japan. Upon returning to the United States, he attended Lowell High School in San Francisco. During the early 1930s, he had been very active in the San Francisco chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League, JACL, the principal organization of the Nisei generation. Thus, among the Issei, the credibility of Murayama's pro-Japan dispatches and speeches was enhanced considerably by his roots in Japanese immigrant society. Ebina Kazuo and Suzuki Kamenosuke were the other two war correspondents for the Shinsekai Asahi. Both followed Murayama to the China front toward the end of 1937. And Issei, Ebina had been a newspaper man in California for over 20 years. He contributed a regular column in the Shinsekai Asahi in which his war reportage appeared. Suzuki was the, was the Tokyo-based correspondent of the Shinsekai Asahi. Both men reported glowingly of the Japanese army in action. Like Murayama, Suzuki also came to the United States and spoke to Issei groups. Under the sponsorship of his newspapers, he presented 59 talks during a two-month speaking tour. The Nichibei Shimbun and Rafu Shimpo had correspondent Kazumaro Buddy Uno. In Nisei, Uno was the only war correspondent who reported in English. He first went to the China front as a reporter for the Shin Sekai Asahi in the fall of 1937 and witnessed the fighting in and around Shanghai. It was on his second tour of the battlefield that he reported for the Nichibei Shimbun and the Rafu Shimpo, covering the siege of Hankou in late 1938. Uno was thoroughly taken in by the Japanese army. It seemed to him such an efficient and disciplined fighting force with soldiers who embodied high samurai virtues. While extolling the Japanese, Uno denigrated the Chinese at every opportunity. The soldiers of the Chinese army, in his opinion, were, quote, guilty of unimaginable brutality and cruelty, unquote, and the nationalist government was incapable of establishing order in governing China. After each stint as a war correspondent, Uno gave pro-Japan talks before both Issei and Nisei groups. He even debated pro-China speakers in public forums before non-immigrant audiences. Understandably, Uno drew high praise from Issei leaders. Ever since the outbreak of hostilities, the adult Nisei on the whole had not stood up in defense of Japan. They either were simply indifferent or adopted a neutral stance, or they were critical of Japan. The Issei expected the Nisei to act as a bridge of understanding between Japan and the United States and to present Japan's side in the Sino-Japanese conflict to the American public. Yet the Nisei, with a few notable exceptions, did not fulfill this expectation. In 1938, Yamashita Soen, Tokyo-based correspondent of the Nippu Jiji of Honolulu, wrote a book on the Nisei, in which he asserted that Issei leaders were shocked at the failure of the Nisei to champion Japan's cause. Similarly, Azume Suime, editor of the popular monthly Nippon to America, lamented the Nisei's failure, which he attributed to a lack of knowledge of the historical circumstances surrounding the conflict. Recognizing the ignorance of the Nisei, the Nichibei Shimbun and Shin Sekai Asahi sponsored a joint essay contest in December 1937 in order to encourage the Nisei to study 
the facts. The chosen theme was how I, as a Nisei, can justify Japan's case in China. 